Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic is periodontal ligament. Periodontal ligament is one of the four components of periodontium. So periodontium is a structure which supports the tooth. So it includes two hard tissues and two soft tissues. Hard tissues are cementum and alveolar bone. Soft tissues are gingiva and periodontal ligament. Gingiva we have already covered. So today's session is about periodontal ligament. So let's get into the details of periodontal ligament. So periodontal ligament, the name itself gives an idea. Peri means around and don't means tooth. So the structures which is around the tooth. So the ligament which is surrounding the tooth is periodontal ligament. So as I mentioned, it is one of the four components of periodontium. So it is defined as the periodontal ligament is a connective tissue that surrounds the root and connects it to the bone. Okay, so this orange color is periodontal ligament. So it is connective tissue that surrounds the root and connects it to bone. So it starts from root to the bone. And it communicates with the marrow spaces through vascular channels in the bone. So it is something or it is a connective tissue which surrounds the root and connects it to the bone. It is given by Carenza. And it has got many names. The synonyms include periodontal membrane, alveolodental ligament, desmodont, pericement, gumphosis or dental periosteum so this is a very important essay in dental histology so this is a very frequently asked essay and there are lots of short notes will be asked from this chapter so you might get a question like explain about gum forces and write about its principal fibers or draw a neat picture and explain about its structure function so you might be knowing the complete answer of periodontal ligament but you might not be knowing that gum forces is periodontal ligament so always make sure that you remember all these names such as periodontal membrane alveolo dental ligament because it connects alveolar bone and tooth desmodont pericementum because it covers cementum gum forces and dental periosteum so these are the synonyms of periodontal ligament now let's see the extension of periodontal membrane. So this is the periodontal membrane I have drawn in orange color lines. So it extends from coronal direction. It is continuous with lamina propria of gingiva. So you will be knowing what is lamina propria of gingiva because in the gingival session we had uh, well uh, covered the connective tissue part of gingiva. So this is the, this pink color is the connective tissue part of gingiva. So it is continues with or it mm, it is associated with lamina propria of gingiva at the coronal side. So this is the crown part. This is the root part. So we say this is the coronal side. This is the apical side. Okay. So in coronal side, it is continuous with lamina propria, and it is demarcated by the alveolar crest fibers so here it is alveolar crest fibers because this is a bone this is a tip of the bone known as alveolar crest so such fibers are demarcating this coronal extension of periodontal ligament and at the root apex it merges with the dental pulp okay so at the root apex see this is the root apex and this pink color is pulp so at the root apex it merges with the dental pulp and it ranges in width from 0.15 to 0.38 mm so 0.15 to 0.38 mm is the width of periodontal ligament this is the width 0.15 to 0.38 so next is the shape of uh, periodontal ligament so it is thinnest around the middle third of the root okay so this is a root portion so this is middle portion it is thinnest around the middle portion or middle third of the root with an hourglass appearance this is an hourglass appearance 
it is broadened at the coronal and apical side but it is thinnest at the middle third of root okay so this is a coronal third this is the middle third this is the apical third so it is thinnest at the middle third so it looks like a hourglass with widened coronal and apical third and we have a radio opaque boundaries of periodontal ligament so when we take a x-ray so we can see an empty space so periodontal ligament will be shown in x-ray as radio lucent area that means it is completely black so there is no structure within it so the x-ray will not produce any image so it will be very black in color which is known as radio lucent but it has two white borders which is known as radio opaque borders so what are those white borders one is a alveolar bone and other one is a cementum so it is outlined by alveolar bone and cementum so in radiograph it looks like a radio lucent area with radio opaque boundaries so it is between cementum this is cementum and alveolar bone so these are the mineralized structures so it will appear as radio opaque or white areas so it appears as black area between two white lines that is radio lucent area between radio opaque lines so the average width changes based on the age around 10 to 15 years it is around 0.21 mm and 30 to 50 30 to 50 0.21 mm in 10 to 15 years and 0.18 mm around 30 to 50 years and it is around 0.15 so as the age increases the width of this periodontal ligament decreases and also it changes according to time of eruption at function or hyperfunction time of eruption it is around 0.1 to 0.5 it is very highest at function it is around 0.2 to 0.3 this one 0.15 to 0.3 but hypofunction it again reduces now let's move on to the development of periodontal ligament so how does it develop so we have seen it develops from dental follicles hope you remember our bell stage advanced bell stage of tooth formation we have what stage gap stage bell stage we have learned dentin and pulp develops from dental papilla and cementum periodontal ligament alveolar bone develops from dental follicle or dental sac so it is developed from dental follicle so what happens it begins with root formation and prior to the tooth eruption so at later bell stage when amelogenesis and dentinogenesis are well advanced the internal and external lamina so we know that the internal and external lamina when the stratum intermedium collapses the outer enamel epithelium and inner enamel epithelium approximates and it becomes two layer cells two layer epithelium with outer enamel and inner enamel epithelium so it forms or it the cervical loop of enamel organ it becomes bent and makes this double layered epithelial root sheath and this root sheath which proliferates apically and forms the future root and forms the future root okay so this is how it forms outer enamel epithelium inner enamel epithelium it bend at root portion or the cervical portion and it proliferates apically so you know what is apically towards the root apically and forms the future root so what happens there will be hardwick's epithelial root sheath at advanced bell stage which covers the root area so this root sheath is continuous so this root sheath is continuous so it loses its structural integrity and forms the remnants which is known as epithelial rest of molasses so epithelial rest of molasses forms so once the epithelial rest of molasses forms what happens there will be connective tissue so there will be the connective tissue okay this is all let it be connective tissue of dental follicle so from dental follicle 
the connective tissue cells from dental follicle migrate to the newly formed root of dentine so it will be like this so the remnants gives the entrance this the pathway of proliferation towards a root dentine okay before it was a hardwick's epithelial root sheath this is hardwick's epithelial root sheath it was a continuous layer after that it loses its structural integrity so the dental follicle which is present outside continuous proliferation happens and it goes between the epithelial rest of molasses and forms a periodontal ligament so that is how it forms and dental follicle cell basically produces fibroblasts cementoblasts and osteoblasts this is collagen this is cementum and this is bone okay collagen is a principal fiber of periodontal ligament so ultimately dental follicle give rise to periodontal ligament cementum and alveolar bone so as the root formation continues cells in the perifollicular mason give give rise to uh, there there will be active uh, synthesis of uh, collagen fibers and this collagen fibers assemble and it forms as a bundle on the bone and cemental surface okay so it becomes bundles so from the dental follicle there will be active synthesis and this fibers will be formed and it will be attached to cementum and bone so this is how it happens this is the alveolar bone proper this is the periodontal ligament space and this is the root cementum so as the growth happens this is the root cemental area this is the alveolar bone area there will be a continuous proliferation mitosis happens and ultimately it joins and it become periodontal ligament so we have a mature periodontal ligament three areas that is bone bone related region bone related region and the middle region and the cementum related region the bone related region is basically very rich in cells and the middle zone is fewer cells with thinner collagen fibers and the cemental related region which is dense and ordered collagen fibers are present so bone related region associated with alveolar bone proper middle region it is thinner and thick bundles of fibers are seen in cemental region because this is a tooth area this is a bone area see this is a tooth this is a bone so this is the picture i am showing here just the opposite here it is a cementum is a alveolar bone but here it is alveolar bone here is a cementum so this is just expanded picture is okay if i draw this picture it will be like this so this is how it forms this is the enlarged version this is an enlarged version of this area but only thing you need to think opposite this is alveolar bone this is root but here it is a root this is a alveolar bone okay so that is how it forms you can see the various formation when the tooth erupts where this is covered within the mm, gingiva so there is little bit of periodontal ligament formation as the tooth erupts there will be more and more periodontal ligament formation when it is completely erupted the bundles will be formed and principal fibers will be completely around the root so what are the functional changes happens in periodontal ligament so the basically periodontal ligament is always subjected to change when there is increased functional demand the width may increase as much 50 percentage of the present width because more function more functional demand more stress it need to bear so it will increase its width fifth up to 50 percentage it can increase and fiber bundles also increase in thickness when there is a increased functional demand but when functional demand decreases the narrowing of periodontal ligament and decrease in number and thickness of fibers happens so it can modify itself based on the functional changes so that's the beginning part of periodontal ligament i explained to you about its extension its shape and the in detail about the development so you need to study properly about the tooth formation that is bud stage cap stage and bell stage then only it is easy to understand if you don't know that chapter properly 
it's very difficult because you need to know what is Hardwick's epithelial rest of Hardwick epithelial root sheath and epithelial rest of molasses and how this collagen fibers starting from dental follicle to the cement man bone so it is a hmm, very important chapter because uh, this is a commonly asked essay question so the short notes might be Hardwick's epithelial root sheath epithelial cell rest of molasses so all these uh, might come as short notes so next thing is uh, the structural uh, elements that is cells and extracellular elements so this is the introduction part development extension shapes and how the uh, periodontal ligament changed according to the functional demands now we move on to the structure the cells and extracellular elements of periodontal ligament thank you